First, a very warm welcome to those who might be visiting today or new to the parish. We welcome you and also those who are watching uh, on the live stream. People from all over the country uh, have tuned in. They, they, uh, maybe their own parish isn't live streaming or they know somebody here or they're related to me. My mom and dad are probably sitting in their living room right now. Uh, but anyway, we welcome you and we're glad that you're with us, whether here in person or online. Um, we've all had the experience of kind of a good day, kind of switching very quickly to become a bad day. And there's certain things that can make that happen. You spill something on yourself, all over you. Somebody scrapes your car. You fail a test. You wake up late. These all certainly have the ability to take a good day and turn it downward, but is there anything worse than losing your keys? With keys come power. With keys come privilege. With keys come access to so much. If you have no keys, it makes it difficult to get into your house, your car, your office, your classroom. With keys comes the ability to be home, to be safe. Keys are an important theme in this week's readings, and it centers around the keys given by Jesus Christ to St. Peter. Take a moment and notice the statue of St. Peter that we have here in our church, just to the left of the tabernacle. Peter there in blue with the book as a, as a gospel, as a writer of the New Testament. And then take a look at those keys. They're huge. Can you imagine carrying around seven or eight of those in your pocket? Right? It would consume you. How big are their cars back then to have keys that are so large? Jesus says, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Keys in the first century were that big, maybe even bigger. So when, in the first reading, when the Lord places the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulders, we get a better sense of the why. It wasn't just a little key, it was very large. To be given keys is a big deal. It comes with responsibility, with power, and the ability to serve. Now, in the case of St. Peter, despite his imperfections, he is entrusted with an awesome responsibility. He's entrusted with leadership in the early church. Peter is Pope number one. Pope Francis, Pope number 266. But what's the big deal about the keys? Why is Jesus giving Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven so important? Now, this is not meant to be a theology class, but this beautiful passage in Matthew's Gospel gives us a basis for a controversial and often misunderstood teaching in the Catholic Church. Extra ecclesiam nulla salus. Outside the church, there is no salvation. We believe that. It's a long-held doctrine of the Catholic faith. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 846, if you want to look it up. And it says, all salvation, all, all salvation comes from Christ through the church, which is his body. The church is necessary for salvation. So am I saying, and does our church teach, that only Catholics can be saved? Yes and no. Hear me out. Sacraments, the seven sacraments of the church, baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, marriage, holy orders, the sacrament of reconciliation, and the sacrament of anointing of the sick. The seven sacraments are the ordinary means, the ordinary means through which Christ offers the grace necessary for salvation. It's why we talk about the sacraments so much. It's why we make a big deal out of a baptism or a confirmation or an ordination. 
It's why we try to offer confessions so frequently here at the church. It's why, as soon as we possibly could, we opened the church back up after the shutdown of April and May. During that time, we continued to offer confessions. We continued to do weddings, although they were much smaller. And even during the shutdown, Mass was offered every single day on this altar, even though nobody was here. It's because the sacraments are the ordinary way that God gives us his grace, a grace that's necessary for our salvation. So where do the sacraments come from? They come from Christ, through the church, the church he founded on the rock of St. Peter. Now, can God work outside of the sacraments? Absolutely. He can and often does. But the ordinary way that God gives us his life is through the seven sacraments of the church. So what about those who are not Catholic? Friends, family? What about Catholics who don't practice their faith? This is why evangelization that we talk of so frequently, it's so, so, so important. This parish exists for evangelization. The church exists for evangelization. God has given us the means to achieve salvation, the sacraments, and yet so many do not avail themselves of this great treasure. Maybe they go to a church that doesn't believe in the sacraments, or one that kind of picks and chooses which sacraments they'll choose to celebrate, or maybe somebody doesn't go to church at all. For some, it's no fault of their own. They seek the Lord with a sincere heart, but they haven't heard the gospel proclaimed. We might ask, whose fault is it that they haven't heard the gospel proclaimed? At the risk of offending, it's yours and mine. If someone doesn't know the gospel, if someone in our life has not been preached to whether with our words or with the life that we live, it's our fault. We look at our patron saint, Francis Xavier, great missionary to the East. In his evangelization in the country of India, he wrote back to his friends studying in Europe, and he said this, quote, Many, many people here are not becoming Christians for one reason only, there is nobody to make them Christians. He goes on, again and again, I have thought of going round the universities of Europe and everywhere crying out like a madman, riveting the attention of those with more learning than charity. What a tragedy, how many souls are being shut out of heaven thanks to you. You and I must share our faith. There are those who know what is true and willingly reject it. As Catholics, and some of you who may not share the Catholic faith, it's important that we dive deep into the teachings of the church, that we give our assent to every teaching of the church, even the ones that might be difficult to follow or not immediately understandable. There's no salvation outside the church. Now, if you're squirming a bit, and this is making you a little uncomfortable, good. We are often way too comfortable in our faith. We think it's just me and Jesus. We have an understanding. I'm good. I don't need to share my faith. I don't need to really live my faith. I can kind of go halfway. Sometimes we turn in on ourselves, or we think that our parish is just for the people who are like me. It's just for the people who think the same way I do. Pope Francis famously said, famously said the church is not a country club. The church is rather a hospital for those who are sick and are in need. And so taking our growth in faith seriously, it's a big deal. Evangelization is a big deal. 
It's my desire, and I hope it's your desire, that every person in the world, every person in the world, would become a Catholic. That sounds a little strident. It may even sound a little extreme. But think about the gospel we just heard. Jesus says, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Christ founded a church. Christ founded a church on the rock of St. Peter. The one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. It's through the church that we receive the sacraments. It's through the sacraments that we receive God's saving grace. We need the church for our salvation. So let's be proud of it. I think especially here in Oklahoma, sometimes it's very challenging to be a Catholic, to be a faithful and believing Catholic, because we're in the minority. We're a very small percentage of the population here in Oklahoma. Maybe in your school, you don't have any other Catholic friends. Maybe in your neighborhood, your family, and maybe that, that other family you kind of know, they're the only Catholics there. But this is not a time to be ashamed. It's not a time to be shy. It's a time to be proud of the faith that we hold, to live it to the full, to spend our days encountering the Lord, growing with the Lord, and then going out to preach the good news that Christ, in his love for us, did not leave us to face this world alone. He gave us a church founded on the rock of St. Peter. He gave Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and these keys will never be lost. These keys will unlock for us the greatest grace of all, our salvation. So may the Eucharist that we celebrate today, may it feed us and nourish us and give us strength, ultimately guiding us home in, to heaven with St. Peter, the rock, and all the angels. May that Eucharist draw us in and give us the strength to never be ashamed, to always be proud, and to always preach the gospel with our lives.